Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you some stunning, really sparkly, glistening eyeshadows from the brand Juicy. It's a Chinese brand. I bought seven of the shades on Chic Decent and I was able to get them on sale. So otherwise, these shades are $10, but I got them for $8.50, which is amazing and an absolute steal because these are truly just so stunning. So there's two kind of very smooth iridescent shades. These have some of the most transparent base I've seen in an iridescent eyeshadow. They're honestly very, very topper-like and I'm going to be showing you all of these swatched on the back of my hand and we're going to go through them and I'm also going to be showing you two looks with these and then there's some neutrals now these do have magnetic pants so you should be able to get them out but it's not going to be easy they don't like just pop out of here probably have to like heat up the base or something I'm sure that they're glued in so let's jump right into it first up is the shade d120 and this one is like a pinky purple flash and you can see it's almost looks white in the pan and here's what it looks like on the finger so so sparkly and especially smooth out but I even think if you use a tacky primer I do think that this would look very just scatter light essentially these are just a bunch of sparkles like I said there's absolutely no base to these next up is the shade d121 and this one is a blue iridescent I feel like this one is maybe a little less PC to the touch it feels actually a little bit drier like the tiniest bit and I do also think that this one has a little bit more of a base to it just the slightest but it really just looks like a bunch of sparkles d111 this is a beige neutral and this one is very very sparkly a little bit on the pc side this is how it picks up i would highly highly recommend a tacky primer and this has no base so while it looks beige in the pan when you apply it you really just get a scattered sparkly look and I don't even think this one could be built up. I'm just adding a little bit more. But essentially, you're just getting a really beautiful sparkly wash. Next up is M122. And this one is a little bit of a darker silver, a little bit on the gunmetal side, but not quite as dark. Now, this one feels different, and you can also tell from the way it picks up. It's much, much smoother. This one feels a little bit harder pressed in there as well. But it is still very, very metallic. It's just... I think this one you can get a little bit more base with it if you were to layer it but once you do put it on it does give that scattered look but you can kind of see a little bit of that base a little bit of that gray base and I'm just gonna add another layer D114 I immediately knew I needed to get the shade. It is so special. There's something very interesting in all the different tones in it. I see like a taupe. I see a little bit of like a lighter purpley pink. And then also a bunch of silvery flecks throughout it. It's very dimensional. This one does feel a little bit harder pressed. But it is very, very sparkly. I mean, look at that. So beautiful. And this one you can see a little bit more of the base compared to all the others. But you could also blend it out, but it definitely, you could still see that very base, almost slightly plummy, like a lighter plum base to it. Just gonna add a little bit more. But the sparkles just kind of sit on top. I love this shade so, so much. Definitely a favorite. D127, this is a cooler toned pink. And this one feels a little bit different from the others as well. Look at how this one picks up. It picks up a little bit chunkier. Still very sparkly, but it does feel a little bit different. And it is way more opaque. This is just with whatever I had on my finger. So this one has that picky base to it. And then the silver flex kind of sitting on top. So, so stunning. And this one is part of a limited edition uh, collection, so I'm not sure how much longer it will be available for. And the next shade is MT119, and this is just a really beautiful, soft, baby pink. And this one also felt a little bit harder pressed, and, it, and it's very, very smooth, while still has that sparkle, but the sparkle is not as obvious as in the other shades. Here's what that one looks like. I definitely can see the pink base in it, but it's very, very subtle. D112, this is a baby blue, very, very sparkly, feels a little bit harder pressed, but does feel drier. And I feel like while it is sparkly, it's the sparkles are not quite as in charge. 
and I could still see a little bit of the blue and almost a little bit of a grayish base to this one, but it's very, very subtle. I do think that some of these might look a little bit similar on the lid. The shade is MT115. This one, texture-wise, reminds me of the limited edition shade, the way it looks in the pan. It looks a little bit more metallic and just a little bit chunky in the pan. And it does feel exactly the same way as the other shade. This is super, super sparkly. I feel like this kind of reminds me of some of these uh, very sparkly neutral leaning shades we've seen indie brands coming out with. It's essentially a silvery shade. It has a little bit of an olive tint to it. So it's not straight up silver. And the last shade is D117. This one doesn't seem as sparkly. Feels very, very smooth, a little bit powdery. So this one reminds me in texture to the blue one, actually. And this one probably has one of the stronger bases to it, and the gold sparkles just kind of sit on top. It almost looks like you put down a matte eyeshadow and then put sparkles on top. I don't think this one's particularly my favorite, but I do see the appeal. And here they are all swatched. You can see how pigmented some are versus some are just really washes of sparkles. I'm going to be using the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes for the mattes only, not the shimmer. I'm going to take this taupe shade. I really just want to do a super easy kind of two eyeshadows and you're done look. So I'm just really blowing that out in the crease and then just taking it all the way up. And just adding a little bit of shading, especially because this is such a taupey shade. So it's just a, it's just a little bit of like a transition. And I'm going to use the shade MT122. This one has tons of little sparkles throughout it, and it is a little bit taupey. So I thought it would be a fun one to try. That is so pretty. And I'm just going to pop that all over the lid, essentially. These are very, very topper-like, so you're not going to get much opacity from these, but I don't know if you can see all the little flecks throughout it. It is so pretty, very, very sparkly, and it blends out into the edges really nicely. So here's the first finished look. For the second look, I'm going in with the center shade, and I'm just going to pop that right into the crease. And a little bit underneath my lower lash line. And then I'm just going in with a little bit more. And I'm going to take a little bit of this dark brown. But just a little bit. And I'm just going to put that right onto the outer most corner. And I just, that was totally an accident. <laughs> just to have a zero balance right now apparently. And I'm just going to blend it out a little bit into this outer corner. This is the shade D127, and this one looks a little bit more almost like chunky in the pan, just a slightly bit more textured in the pan. And here's what that picks up. Ooh, it is so sparkly. Just misted my brush a little bit. It actually looks very silvery. I feel like once it's on the lid, it doesn't really have that pink color to it but it is super super sparkly I mean there's a flex of sparkle everywhere now and then for the inner portion I thought I would use the shade MT119 which is a smoother a lighter pink. but now that I know that that one doesn't really look pink it's kind of a moot point but I'm just gonna pop that above it a little bit so I definitely think this one is still very sparkly but I think this other shade is way more sparkly and not really as pink. I'm just going to take it all over the lid. Definitely have quite a bit of fallout. I was kind of expecting that. I think a glitter primer. Here's the second finish look. They also have mattes that are in this format in the compacts. So I would definitely recommend doing your eye makeup before your base and using a tacky primer, especially with some of the more very sparkly shades. So like these two right here, this one, this one, just to really help the sparkles stick down. If you if you have deep set eyes, you'll be fine without one most likely. But if you have hooded eyes, I would definitely recommend it. I have worn a couple of these and I didn't have any creasing issues. As for the shades, I would recommend out of these. 
I would say it's going to extremely depend on what you're looking for because what I would recommend based on my preferences might not be what you would prefer. So for me personally, the two iridescent shades, they're just too much of a wash of sparkle that I just feel like that's not really something I see myself using. It's not really worth it for me to use those. So I actually think I'm gonna use these as highlighters. I think these make great highlighters. I think my favorite shades are essentially almost the rest of them with the exception of these two. This one predominantly because it's not as sparkly and then same with this one. Not really something I use too too much. I kind of prefer some of these other kinds of shades. I think these are really fun one and done shades or just really simple looks with a matte in the crease or something like that. So let me know in the comments below which of the shades is your favorite. If you've tried any of these I would love to hear your thoughts and that's everything for this video. If you enjoyed it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time.